Hong Kong Federation of Students and the government are scheduled to have their first dialogue on political reform on Tuesday. Both sides have agreed on the details of the meeting. The talks, aimed at easing tensions, will be broadcast live. But no members of the public will be allowed in the venue. Jean de Silva reports. After early attempts at dialogue fell through, student leaders and the government have finally agreed on the details of a meeting. Uh, I'm pleased to say that um, good progress has been made in the preparation for the dialogue between representatives of the Hong Kong Federation of Students and the Constitutional Development Task Force. Uh, this dialogue is now likely to take place um, next Tuesday afternoon. The two-hour dialogue will likely take place at the Hong Kong Academy of Medicine in Wong Chuk Hang. Besides Kerry Lam, Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs Raymond Tam, Secretary for Justice Rimsky Yoon, Director of the Chief Executive's Office Edward Yao, and Under Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs Lao Konghua will also be attending the talks. Sitting across from them will be five student representatives. Despite some earlier reservation about having a moderator uh, in the dialogue, the uh, student representatives have now agreed that we could have a moderator for the meeting. Lam indicated that Professor Leonard Zhang, convener of the Heads of Universities Committee and president of Lingnan University, will be mediating the dialogue between the two sides. She also said that the talks will have to be conducted within the framework laid down by the National People's Congress Standing Committee. This much-awaited meeting will be broadcast live, but no members of the public will be allowed in the venue. Reacting to the news, this student protester in Admiralty spoke of her expectations for the dialogue. Although she doesn't think the NPC Standing Committee will go back on its decision, she hopes the government will submit a new report to Beijing without twisting Hong Kong people's true views on political reform. Juan da Silva, TVB News. Well, we're nearly into the third week of the Occupy protest and there are still people gathered in mainly Admiralty and Mongkok with a lighter presence in Causeway Bay. Well, you're looking right now at the live scenes in Harcourt Road at Admiralty and in Mongkok. It's largely calm in the protest zones right now, although the atmosphere is tense after clashes last night in Mongkok. Conflicts arose after protesters took part in a flash mob on Hong Kong Island, where protesters would suddenly block off roads before dispersing quickly. We saw some of that in Lung Wa Road near Tamar. More serious clashes between protesters and police went overnight in Mong Kok, which left 15 officers injured. At the peak of the unrest, police put the number of protesters at 9,000 in the Mong Kok area. 33 people were arrested, including an American photographer. Liz Yoon has the story. <sighs> Tensions mounted in Mong Kok last night as protesters broke through police cordons to expand the occupation zone. Officers told the demonstrators to stay on the pavement. Protesters held up umbrellas to avoid being pepper sprayed, and police used batons to drive back the crowd. 33 people were arrested on suspicion of common assault, criminal damage, resisting arrest, and disorderly conduct in public place, among other charges. The chaos began at around 7 p.m. when protesters occupied both the northbound and southbound lanes of Nathan Road between Argyle and Nelson Streets. About two hours later, the occupied area was extended towards Shantong Street. Crowds also gathered in front of Langham Place. At around midnight, police retreated to the junction of Argyle Street and Nathan Road. Protesters reoccupied Nathan Road between Argyle and Dunder Streets and parts of Portland Street and Argyle Street. Some members of the public were unhappy with the continued occupation of the area by protesters. Well, I'm actually here for an education exhibition this weekend, so um, we're not actually sure whether this will go ahead or not um, today because of um, the, the protests here. So clearly it is affecting me personally in that way. This salesperson who works in the pharmacy on Dunda Street said sales have dropped by 70% due to the civil disobedience movement. Protesters we spoke to are worried that the police might carry out a clearance operation in Mong Kok. I think the police will do something on Sunday to make sure that everything will go smooth on Monday as um, people have to go to work and go to school on Monday and they have to do something to show that they have a real power on, uh, in their hand. 
The atmosphere was still tense in the early afternoon, with some 20 police officers carrying shields standing guard at the junction of Nathan Road and Agao Street. Liz Yun, TVB News. Police deployed dogs to the area outside the CE's office to help control crowds of demonstrators who gathered there last night. One officer was injured when he was allegedly hit by a water bottle thrown by a protester. And one demonstrator was arrested on suspicion of assaulting a police officer. Joelle De Silva reports. Demonstrators gathered by the eastbound lane of Lungwa Road attempted to once again block traffic there around midnight. Police officers on standby outside the city's office across the road immediately stepped in to prevent a reoccupation of the area. The move prompted protesters to run towards Tamer Park. Police urged protesters to stay away for their own safety and that of other road users. Several demonstrators were seen being taken away by the authorities. That angered other protesters. Scholarism's Oscar Lai questioned police motives to take away two of the demonstrators. He pointed out that they did not attempt to take the road and were instead just standing on the side. Shouts of release them were heard from the crowds. As tensions peaked, police brought out dogs to help ease the standoff. Also, reinforcements soon arrived on the scene to strengthen police lines. Protesters there said they are angry because the government is not listening to the demands of the people. They say that's why they are resorting to civil disobedience. John De Silva, TV News. Authorities have condemned protesters involved in last night's chaos, saying their behavior was neither peaceful nor nonviolent, as the Occupy movement originally claimed to be. And Occupy Central organi organizer Chan Kin Man has warned of people trying to stir up trouble in an attempt to destroy the movement. Diane To reports. It's the first time the police chief has appeared in public since the Occupy protests began on the 28th of September. And he was clearly upset with the way things have gone. To this protester, you may think that your illegal acts have prevented the police in going about our duties, disrupted our deployment and even forced us to retreat. Superficially, this may be the case. But let me tell you this. These illegal acts are undermining the rule of law, undermining what Hong Kong always relied upon to succeed. I urge you to think about this. If from now on the police fail to uphold the law effectively, who stand to benefit and who stand to gain? Thank you. Secretary for Security Lai Tung Kwok expressed his support for the city's law enforcement agency and condemned known radical protesters for coordinating and inciting the clashes in Mong Kok. Meanwhile, Occupy Central organizer Chan Kim Man said it's strange that it's taken 20 days for the police chief to respond to the public. But he pointed out that the current crisis is first and foremost a political issue rather than a simple public order issue. He added that the major responsibility lies with the government. Until today's 21st day, uh, 21 days. And it's, uh, it's very sad to see that even a dialogue cannot be launched between the government and the student. And if the government have any determination to end this occupation, it's not through police force, but by negotiations and responding to the community's uh, demands. Chan warned in an article published in a local newspaper that the clashes on the streets may have been set up as a trap. He added that he and the other two Occupy Central organizers, along with Cardinal Joseph Zen, will take responsibility for their actions and turn themselves in to the police when this is all over. He said if their charges are reasonable, they may not even hire a lawyer to defend themselves. Diane Toh, TVB News. Well, during the Mong Kok scuffles last night, an American photojournalist who's won a number of awards for her war coverage was arrested after she stood on the bonnet of a private car on Argyle Street and took photos while the driver was in the car. After Paula Bronstein was released on bail, she told the media it's the first time she's ever been arrested. The driver of the car must have complained, but at the time everybody was pushing against the car. There was no space, there was no place to go. 
She expressed surprise at her arrest, saying it's commonplace for journalists to jump on cars in war zones. She was taken away for suspicion of criminal damage and has to report back to police later this month. The Foreign Correspondents Club has issued a statement condemning Bronstein's arrest as well as threats other journalists received while covering the clashes.